Oh, there it is. There we go. Okay. And obviously, every time I start to record it, the quality goes going down. Okay. I have to find a solution for this. But anyway, welcome to my podcast. So, Jenny, just um, introduce yourself, tell us something, uh, what you are doing, where you're from, uh, and maybe something about how we met. <laughs> so, go. Um, so Jennifer Reed. Um, I am, I've been in the fitness industry for a very long time, um, kind of grew up in this industry in a way, um, but have found um, this to be kind of where my passion and my heart has taken me. So um, it's been a completely wild ride, but it's something that continues to inspire me every single day, which is what I like to be able to do for as many people as I possibly can. So, and I know that you and I, Rafal, met um, during, uh, I think it was called the Impact Leadership Group back in 2019. Yeah. Um, it was a small group, but it was really fun. It was really an intimate um, group of professionals that have been um, looking for maybe a different type of, um, you know, reassessment of what motivates us all. Um, you know, getting a, a different outside look um, into our businesses because each business is very unique um, with the group that we had. And it was a discovery process unlike anything I've ever experienced. Yeah, that's for sure. It was a crazy time. It was a, because everybody's coming just like nutrition, some coaches. You've been mm -hmm. in the just like maybe more in the gym. Now something switching because... Um, The time is changing, and especially right. now, so many people go online. And you told me before that you just uh, took the step completely out of the gym into the mm -hmm. uh, into the business online. So tell us something about this. Um, it was it was a tough decision. Um, I really like working directly with people, um, no doubt. But um, you know, due to the the global uh, insanity that we've all had to kind of fumble through over the last what eight nine months now. Um, it's kind of forced me to reassess what I'm doing and to really come up with a different plan that is going to be something that nobody can take away but myself. So, you know, the challenge there was, um, you know, the, the uncertainty with the fitness industry, with the gyms, you know, one day we're open, the next day we're closed. You know, a lot of the clients and a lot of my clients really struggled with being in limbo, um, unsure of what to do, how to handle the situation. They didn't have any, um, a place to go to work out. So how do you take that um, element that they, they thrive on and bring it home for them for the period of time that we all had to do everything from our houses? So um, it was a challenge, but during that process, it's something that I discovered that I really enjoyed doing because I could still be in constant contact with my clients. Even though we were at home, we would do like a Zoom training or a FaceTime training. We were still able to connect um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but in a different format. And for me, my lifestyle with my kids being homeschooled now, it's really been, um, it's been a really nice breath of fresh air. And just like to take a little bit deeper inside of the online coaching. So you told us that you um, coach them one on one every time. So you got a, like a couple of clients. How many clients do you uh, coach now around? Um, I don't do the Zoom coaching anymore because ah, our gyms are exactly. open. Yes. So ah, the okay, gyms got are fully it. open. Um, but um, I've been still writing up their programs, um, you know, taking care of all of their needs as far as um, that's concerned, and then they take on the responsibility of executing the program on their own, which is a good thing. Um, I think for at least some of the clients that I have, I think I, they rely too much on having somebody hold their hand while they're there, even though I know that they all needed to spread their wings a little bit and take on a challenge on their own. Yeah, I think this is the biggest step that they have to take. I guess nobody is there, mm -hmm. nobody watching them, and they may be be a little bit more responsible for what they are yeah. doing of the quality Absolutely. of the movement and all this stuff. So they mm -hmm. always uh, keep the record on. So they write down everything, they, the sets, the reps, everything. The, so you can ex assess them better the next time and write a better program. So they continue to progress because exactly. this is what, what, what they pay you for. So yep. make some progress. <laughs> so, Absolutely. okay, maybe, may, yeah. This is, I guess, the biggest issue that the most people have when they buy their own. Mm -hmm. And 
So, so the gyms are completely open now. Yeah, they are completely open. Um, you know, for who knows how long, like I said, it's yeah. been really weird here in Arizona, you know, they were open for a couple of weeks and all of a sudden they were shut down for like two, three months and then they were open and then they were shut down again. But consistently, thankfully they've been open since, um, I want to say beginning of August. So, you know, it's been, it's been nice because everybody's kind of getting back into their regular routine. They're getting, um, reacclimated to what it is that they love to do. Okay. And, um, do they have to, to tra uh, train with the mask and everybody's running with the mask or is this? Really? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, now I know some of the private gyms, like the smaller, um, you know, personal training gyms. I know a lot of them aren't doing that, but, um, for we still are mask mandated here in arizona so yeah. um box gyms absolutely and they have people policing it all the time oh wow so, yeah okay so maybe now for you it's even better you don't have to wear a mask uh, being around the people all the time because like mm -hmm. six seven eight clients a day and all the time with a mask it makes a little bit work uh, a little bit harder um yeah. but it but this is this is your profession. This is what you do for a living. But mm -hmm. but what I know you from from Instagram, everything is completely different direction because you're not only a coach, you you know you're also a figure competitor, mm -hmm. and you're now in the middle of the preparation for something. Yes. just tell us something about it. Um, I am. I am currently eight weeks and two days out um, for my next competition. It's been a year since my last prep. Um, this is going to be probably one of the biggest milestones in my career as an athlete been going on about six years now um that i've been actively working and bodybuilding but for sure hoping and prepping as best we can to turn pro this year so um i will be competing at two shows back to back we're going to see how they go their national competitions Thankfully, they're at the same venue, literally one day apart. So the prep there is actually pretty easy. You're already there. You may as well just do them both. Um, but we're, we're, we're turning pro this year. That's just not an option. Okay, so you, you try to get your pro card. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's a quite an accomplishment if it's going to uh, fall everything into pieces. Nice. Mm -hmm. And I, I, had, I think that a lot of people, when they think about um, fitness, uh, but I, I think that this is not only fitness about sports. Mm -hmm. They think that everything is so easy. The, that's just like everybody can do this. This is not not so not so hard. Maybe the eating part is a little bit harder, but but um, working out it's so easy. So how many times do you have to work out? How many do you do you do the posing? How is your uh, your food schedules look and and cardio and everything? Just oh like. my goodness! So you know. When anybody comes into this now, if it's like if, if you're doing this for your first show, you want to just go have some fun and just to reward yourself for the hard work that you've put in to achieve a certain goal, by all means, do it. I think that the experience from competition prep, hands down, is going to teach you more about yourself. It's going to teach you more about your body, what your mental capabilities are. Um, and that in and of itself resonates through everything that you do in life it's going to make you a better human it's going to make you a better partner it's going to make you a better parent it's going to make you better all around because of the insane amount of of discipline that you have to have in order to get on stage you know you see these people these pros you know on the olympia stage and all this other stuff they have spent a lifetime prepping for that moment so and it's not just, you know, let me go and work out here and there. Each program is designed so specifically for every individual because no individual is the same. Every prep is different. Every person is different. You may look, you may have one prep that goes one way one time, and then all of a sudden you're getting into prep again, and everything is completely changed. Our bodies change. Our bodies evolve. And you have to really take a lot of that into consideration. There's a lot of thought process that goes into it. Um, every detail matters. So, you know, for what my, my preps look like, um, this particular one, um, we're, we did a 20-week prep. Um, the reason why we did that is because we wanted to take things a little bit slower in the beginning and then really push as hard as we can in the middle so we are ready a couple weeks out from the show, which gives us time to make adjustments with nutrition and different things like that. 
to fill out the body in the way that it needs to be. So, um, you know, posing is daily. Posing is every single day. That is something that will make or break anybody on stage. So you can look and have a rock star body. You can be just shredded and peeled inside out. But if you don't perform and if you get on stage and you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get passed along with you know, everyone else who didn't quite have it. So to me, posing is one of the most important aspects of what we do. Um, So, you know, it's, it's hours and hours. I spend seven hours a week, an hour every day, seven days a week posing. And that is me making sure that in my head, if I can do this with my eyes closed and I know that I'm hitting every single pose perfectly when I get on stage, I'm good. I'm comfortable. I'm not nervous. I feel confident in my execution of what I've done. I know my body will be there. But if I can't showcase the best of what I have, the judges are not going to, they're not going to care. They're not going to look at me and they're going to look at somebody else who can. Um, My training schedule is pretty insane. Um, I do get up at three o'clock every single morning. Um, I'm at the gym by 345. I usually am there these days, for some reason, I cannot get out of the gym without being there for almost three hours. Um, for me, I work out fasted. That is, um, for a lot of people, extremely hard, but I'll tell you, it's one of the best ways to train. I don't believe that people should eat before they go to the gym. Digestion takes and consumes a lot of our energy. And for me, I want that energy to go to building muscle and leaning out and my cardio and all these other things modalities that I have to incorporate in my morning versus digesting breakfast or anything. So, um, you know, that is a really big challenge for a lot of people. So I get up early because I know that if I'm in the gym by 345, I'm done by, you know, 715, 730, I can go home and eat and I can be right on schedule for the rest of my day. How is your work? I mean, three hours of work, Mm -hmm. (laughs) workout. So it means it's just like uh, um, full body, total body is like upper body, lower body is like by muscles uh, split. Um, how do you, how is it split? So it, it is by um, certain muscle groups. Um, I don't do total body, um, at least not until like the last week of prep. Um, uh, so my split is typically lay, I do two leg days a week. One leg day is quad focused. The other leg day is gluten ham focused. So I hit calves on those days as well. So I incorporate calves on top of my leg day, which takes a good hour and a half, um, you know, with having the appropriate amount of breaks in between each set. Um, You know, that's something that's really important is that you take as long as you need to, to be 110% ready for that next set. Because if you're not on point for that, you're just, you're wasting your time. So, um, you know, it's about an hour and a half for every single workout that I do. I incorporate abs five days a week. Um, we're overtraining them right now because we want to achieve a certain look this time with them that we didn't get last year. Um, so we're going to be doing that until, you know, a few days before the show. We'll kind of see what happens. Um, now, I do hit um, chest, delts, abs, and calves all in the same day. Another hour and a half, sometimes hour and 45 minute workout there. Um, and then... Um, you know, my back arms is usually towards the latter part of the week, but I do like a two day on one day off and then basically three days on and then one day off. My off days are still active rest. So when you're in prep, it's important that you still get up and you still, um, you sweat, get your cardio in, get your abs in. If maybe you missed your calves during the week one day, then you can get in those supplemental things that are going to make an impact compounded over time. Um, There's so many little details that go into it. Um, Now, post-workout is when I do my cardio. Um, I'm on 50 minutes every single day. Um, I do uh, like a hit list split. So 20 minutes hit where I'm all out for for 30 seconds. And then I'm 30 seconds um, like a cruise, basically. I've had some um, issues with an ankle. So um, I had a... um, a uh, ligament tear. Um, it was a grade three. Um, took care of that with some prolotherapy, but it caused some other issues during this prep that have been kind of problematic with pain. So I've had to 
take away the treadmill. I've had to take away the bike. And I've been basically grounded to the elliptical for my hit and then the stairs for my steady state. So those are my two go-tos um, that have made, honestly, a more impact than getting on the treadmill or riding the bike. It's just, you know, my body has responded better to that. And it's because it's not causing any inflammation or pain. Um, so um, my active rest days, I do not get up as early. Um, I try not to. I at least allow myself one day a week where I can sleep more than six hours um, because when we are sleeping and we have that rest day or whatever it is, that extra sleep, that's when our body's doing all the work. You know, we destroy it every single day to the capacity that we have to. But if you're not getting enough rest, you're just going to yeah. be wanting into walls. So um, it, uh, it's a pretty intense um, training schedule, but every single second, every single day, every single um moment of being in the gym makes all the impact in the world. Um, is something I always talk to my clients about is that, you know, if you get in there and you're not bringing 110%, you don't get in there and give every ounce of what you have to your training session, to the goals that you have in your head and you've written down and all these things that we're trying to work for, you're never going to get there or it's going to take a really long time. You need to earn your sleep. Earning your sleep means getting up, whenever you have to getting into whatever training facility, whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish and you go at it and you go at it as hard as you can. If you're not falling over in a heap of exhaustion by the end of the day, you haven't worked hard enough. Um, and, and that's just the reality of what it is to go through a competition prep. And it doesn't matter where you're at. Some days are easier. Some days are harder. Um, you know, it's, um, it's all in your head. It's all in your mind. But if the head and the heart are connected in the right place and are together, it's going to work out every single time. And if you truly love what it is that you're doing, which I do, you're never going to struggle. Not as bad as somebody who really maybe doesn't want to do this, but they're trying to do it anyway. It's, it's something that just has to be deeply rooted inside of you. And you just have to be so passionate about it that if um, if you don't get to where you're trying to go and you don't finish and accomplish that goal, you're never going to respect yourself. And that's just kind of the things that I think about yeah. every single day. Yeah, I, you talk about passion. Do you think that the passion is now bigger than it was in the prep before, maybe to the last competition that you've been to? So it's like every time the, the passion for the competition is growing and makes you... Uh, want it even more because you've been maybe not not successful as you should be, but you've been one step further. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Because you're always trying to improve. Um, you know, championships are not won on stage. They're not won in any theater or any arena. They're won in the thousands of hours of training. Um, you know, the 5 a.m. runs, the training when everyone else is still sleeping. That's when those things are won. And every single time you go through a prep, your body changes. Um, something changes. The way your body holds on to fat in a different way changes. So you try to improve upon those areas every single time. And if you know that you've made a significant change of any kind during each prep, then you've already won because that's the goal. The goal is to always try to improve the physique. What can I do better? How can I, how can I present this better on stage? How can I um, train a little bit different? Maybe my nutrition me needs to be um, handled in a different regard, but every single prep you are fueled to run harder than you did the prep before, even though you felt like you did the prep before, but yeah, it's different. <laughs> I also think that uh, every prep was hard, but the next one was, uh, will be even harder. Mm -hmm. So, um, the question is for me, just like, what time do you go to bed? If you get up at three, <laughs> Okay. So I'm also a mom. I have two kids yeah. and my kids can't go to bed at seven o'clock. Like I would really like to. However, um, we are usually in bed, you know, between eight, eight thirty at night. So if I can fall asleep by nine, I'm good to get up at 3 AM. Um, and then, you know, depending on the day, sometimes I have to take a nap. Like I'm just, you know, dead tired. And I don't like to throw the T word out there very often, but mm. you know, there comes a 
a time in your prep where you're going to be tired and you're going to be tired a lot. Um, you know, you're getting more depleted, um, you know, food decreases, your caloric expenditure is far surpasses anything that you're putting in your body. Um, and you, you get, sometimes you get to that point where you start to become unglued and unpeeled. So, you know, power naps are, are crucial. And I think there really should be a staple in everybody's prep, even if it's 20 minutes. It's all you need. Yeah, I you guess know? so. And you're always talking about we. Who is we? We are in the pre You don't say I am in the pre preparation. <laughs> so we. So I, I guess it's a coach or your yep. partner or whatever, partner in crime. <laughs> or yep. So who is I supporting you there? I always talk about my coach. Um, okay. Every coach has a coach. People always yeah. ask me. I've, I've prepped myself out before um, for past shows. Um, however, I like to not have to think about those details. Yeah. Um, we are all hypercritical of ourselves and we will be our worst enemy when it comes to making those decisions to, you know, fine tune every detail that you need to when you're in competition prep. So I like to have a coach, somebody that can continuously hold me accountable, even though I do it myself. But sometimes you need that little extra push. Like, you know, you got check-ins, you know, so if you don't have or make changes during those check-ins, You don't want to let your coach down. But again, you don't want to let yourself down. Um, so for me, I love having that. I don't have to think about it. I get to enjoy the execution of it. And I get to enjoy the training. I get to enjoy, um, you know, the cardio, the posing and everything else. And I don't have to deal with my program. So um, is it the first time that you have a coach for preparation for the competition? Um, this is the third time I've had a coach for preparation. Is the um, same coach or different one? No, when I was early on in my um, athletic career in this industry, I had um, I hired a coach. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, and I knew I, there was a goal that I, I had in mind, but I wasn't sure how I was going to get there. So I had somebody for you know a couple years, um, and then I kind of took on the challenge on my own once I started really educating myself and immersing myself in this industry. It's something that I've I eat, sleep, and breathe every day and have for years. Um, But the coach I have now is phenomenal. He's very well known in our industry. Um, very humble human being, really cares a lot about um, his clients, whether you're an athlete or not. Um, and I ended up hiring him four weeks out from a show last year. So I wasn't going to compete. I had been 18 months since I'd been on stage and I was going through my Christmas shred so I wanted to, I wanted to be, have a certain look and a physique by Christmas. It was a gift I was giving to myself. And okay. um, four weeks out from this particular show, I said, you know what, I got, I'm going to get on stage. So I called, hired him and said, hey, what do you think about a four week prep? And we just went for it. So, um, and he's been my coach ever since. For four weeks, only four weeks prep? Four? Four weeks, four. Yeah. Oh my God. So it was, that was a, that was a tough one. It was a good show though. Um, we ended up taking first in my division. Um, wow. I, I just, I enjoyed every minute of it. It'd been a long time since I'd been on stage and I was just really happy to be there. So. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah. So, so the goal is to get a pro card and what is the next step? So you, I, I mean, I mean, it's like only as a coach, you got goals. Mm -hmm. If you achieve a goal, what is the next step? <laughs> the next word. I know that you have it in mind. <laughs> yeah, it's something I've dreamt about for a long time. And there's always another goal. There's always more improvements that are going to be made. But, um, you know, once we get over this milestone and achieve this milestone, it's back to work. It's back to preparations. Um, you know, I we have a we're fortunate to have the Wings of Strength um, here uh, local in Arizona. Their corporate office is here. Um, I love what they do. They're phenomenal um, with their shows and their productions. They did just buy the Olympia last year. Um, now they do an all female bodybuilding show here in Arizona um, once a year. And the coolest thing about this is that they give female bodybuilders, like the actual bodybuilding division, a chance to get on stage over the last few years since it's been on hiatus from the Olympia stage. Um, these are all professionals. Um, they have an amateur division too, but this is where I have my heart set on making my pro debut next year. So we're going to go and get back to work. Hopefully everything 
all the stars align and the body works for me and we're able to get in prep for that next, um, that next goal of mine. That's, it'd be an step. honor. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, what time is uh, going to be the next year? The competition? Um, now it depends on what's going on with oh, yeah. uh, now COVID and all of that. All of these shows have been moved. Um, so typically it's in, um, September. Yeah. But you know, it just, it really depends on whether or not they can actually hold these competitions at that point. We just, we don't know. So we just kind of take it day by day. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Everything is moving. So, mm -hmm. and to be honest, it doesn't sound like a lot of fun for me, what you are doing right now. <laughs> Because, I mean, just like I know as a coach, it is, but would you, if somebody asking you, that you real, real, real uh, reason for doing this, you explain this everything to him. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think everybody can understand it. But if somebody don't know what it, what it's take to be there, would you recommend somebody to doing this just like to go maybe for one competition, maybe to learn? I, I know the learning effect of mm -hmm. something like this is big as you mentioned yeah. in the beginning but if you explain this like you explained it to me right now i think everybody would say just like okay i'm out I, whatever it is i don't the most people will, would quit even yeah. before starting yeah so yeah. um for me is the question so how can you sustain in this level and just uh, keep going keep going and keep going and just like Because for me, it's just like, I mean, just like you, you, you said, it's just like, yeah, the color, calories, I don't know, how, how many calories are you eating right now? Uh, I think I'm probably around like 16, 1650, 1700 a day, so. Yeah, I mean, just like, it sounds a lot mm -hmm. if somebody is not moving. Somebody yeah. is just like doing a sedentary job, yep. but you work out like seven, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. for three hours so it's like 21 hours of yep. pure work workout uh this is this burns so much so many calories i mean people just don't 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 get it into perspective how mm -hmm. so how low you go i i don't know how much you burn but i, I would suggest you're gonna end up like at one 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 ten maybe yeah. if you're just like around like this maybe one one three in top so um, there's not much en energy for the day mm -hmm. to keep the w to keep working. So how would you um, and uh, Jay, how would you explain this to somebody? Even though it doesn't sound like fun, make them look fun. Well, see, I I I do my best with that. I think I try to at least on social media. I don't know. I mean, I I want people to see the positive side of of what this is. Um, because as I mentioned before, I think this is just an experience that um, anybody getting into any kind of fitness journey um, should think about, you know, experiencing whether or not they get on stage um, as like an end result, but go through the process, you know, see what you're really capable of. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, I think it's always fun to challenge ourselves um, in any possible way. Our bodies can do a lot more than what, we think they can. Um, but you know, getting through the day, it's just, you got to stay on top of your food. You know, if you miss a meal, that's when it starts to hurt. Um, but if you're consistent with the nutrition, you know, a lot of what we eat is all whole foods. So even though it may be like 16, 1700 calories a day, it's whole foods. It's, it's, you know, it's vegetables, it's protein, there's nothing processed. So the quantities of it actually really do kind of fill you up. Um, but don't get me wrong. There are days where I'm, at least this far into prep where I'm, I'm waking up at, you know, two o'clock in the morning and I'm starving. Um, you know, and then I know I have another hour of sleep, but then I got to get up and go train when I'm starving. Um, so those, those days can get a little bit tough. Um, water does help. Um, you know, we consume as much water as we can stand in and around two gallons a day. Um, you know, we got to keep that water off the body and that's the only way that you can do yeah. that. Um, so, that does help to a certain extent. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, I think a lot of us tend to consume for pleasure rather than, um, consuming for what the body really needs in order to function. 
So, um, you know, changing somebody's mindset to the fact that food is fuel, like it's, it serves a purpose. Not that indulgences aren't welcomed once in a while because they are, um, they make us feel human, but at the same time, you know, you have to think about what it is that you're trying to accomplish in life at the same time. Um, you know, what is your lifestyle like? What do you do for work? You know, do you have kids? Are you home? Are you a stay at home parent? Do you have a nine to five? Do you work overnights? You know, establishing those things is really important when thinking about nutrition, because the more you can leverage it, even during something like this, the better chance that you're going to have in sustaining that energy throughout the day. So, you know, leveraging nutrition is crucial in every area of life. It doesn't matter what you're doing um, or what you do. Uh, you know, you want to be able to take that component and make that um, the biggest part of of your your existence. So. Um, and how do you tr uh, try to motivate your clients? I mean, just like for you, it's your, like you said, bread and butter. So it's like day mm -hmm. in, day out. You know exactly what to do. If you're not, if you, even if you're hungry, you know, you have, the job has to be done. Right. Point. That, that's it. For, for the most people, it's just like, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat. Right. Just like, and it may, it probably in most cases, as long as it's not running away from me, I can catch it. I'm going to eat it. So, <laughs> you, you know, so, so if there's some, uh, some like bar or whatever that people are going to eat it, if they're somewhere in a gas station, they're going to eat something the, the, the quickest. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you teach, uh, teach your uh, clients just like to be maybe a little bit more like you? Um, you know, it's, you have to really have them understand what's important to them. Um, you know, making their nutrition work for them and their lifestyle, like I mentioned, is extremely important. So being prepared for that is number one. Um, I always teach and guide my clients on meal prep, um, how to meal prep efficiently. So it doesn't seem like a daunting task, but if you have food prepped in the right, um, amounts of what you need for each meal, there's no excuses not to stay on track because you can grab it, you can go, you can put it in the microwave, you can eat it cold, whatever you need to do um, in order to stay on track. So, you know, I try to teach my clients to um, first and foremost, learn to just to meal prep twice a week. You know, it could be, you know, once a week, twice a week, whatever you need to do in order to make it fit within your lifestyle, but have that ready. Because if you have those things ready, you're never going to fall back. You know, there's always going to be temptations and things like that out there. But, you know, for a lot of my clients, I do, I mean, I do give them the opportunity to have a cheat meal or a refeed day, you know, where the entire day, maybe they're carb loading or they're doing something else. Um, one, it just makes them feel a little bit better physically, mentally, emotionally. Um, but, you know, they, they feel better getting right back to their regular program. So meal prep is 100% the most important component. Okay. And how do you make it more? Um, so th that is not always the same because for the most people, just like they think if you, if you tell them something, okay, it's only chicken, rice and broccoli. So, okay. I know you can eat it every day. I could eat it every day. That's not a point in this, but for the most <laughs> people, it's just, just like, no, I don't want to. I just like give me a, a little bit more ver variety in, into my food. So, mm -hmm. what, what what is the uh, maybe the the three points and everybody has to think about when they prep their meal? Mm -hmm. um, the number one reason why people aren't consistent with their nutrition or they end up cheating or falling off the map altogether is because their food tastes like crap. Um, mm. You know, I encourage everybody to get creative. You know, you don't have to have plain dry food every single day. You know, don't be afraid to put salt on your food. Don't be afraid to season your food. There are so many things out there that I, I provide as guidance um, for my clients, depending on their goals as to things that they can do to cook their food and actually have it be really good. So there's a lot of things that um, I like to have my clients include in their nutrition um, so they can cook things that taste good. Um, and sometimes make it feel like you're eating something you're not supposed to be eating, but in all reality, it's okay and healthy for you. Um, you know, I think a lot of the, the, the mindset with the nutrition is that people think, oh, this is going to be boring. You know, my dad is yeah. the worst at that. He will never eat the same thing two days in a row. He just won't do it. 
he has to have flavor in his food. He has to have big flavor. It's just the way he's designed. Um, and he's set in his ways that way, even though he knows that maybe some of these things aren't good for him. He's just very adamant about that. So, um, you know, showing him ways that he can make his food really good, not eating necessarily the same protein every single meal or having the same meal two days in a row, whatever it happens to be, helps him stay um, on track. Very much so. You know, air fryers are a lifesaver when it comes yeah, to it's nutrition prep. Oh, and, I love oh them. It's like, oh, it tastes way better than afterwards, even though it's the same chicken in the yeah. air dryer, it sounds way better. It, it's like, it, it's just it changes the whole perspective, you know? Yeah, exactly. You know, on french fries they actually taste really good you know there's so many different yeah. things that you can do um you know you take a rotisserie chicken put it in the air fryer and it tastes like fried chicken you exactly. know and exactly. it, it's there's nothing wrong with it yeah um, but so what what would be the uh, the one meal that the people just like mm, uh, i would say should eat the most to get everything out of the day. I mean, it's like something like, it's the, it's the, the breakfast, it is the maybe just like the lunch, is the dinner. So what is the most important, because everybody said yeah, the breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Okay, mm -hmm. we got it. If I ask you, you would say, uh, my breakfast is four hours after I get up. So it's not yeah. even breakfast anymore. <laughs> Time-wise, it is breakfast, mm -hmm. it's like seven o'clock, but it's still not, not, not breakfast, it's not the first meal. So, because I, I think you're gonna, get like a post-workout shake or whatever. So this um, would be your breakfast, first. No, actually. So no? I wait until I'm done training and then I have breakfast or what would be considered breakfast. Um, yeah. I don't like to add anything like this far into prep. Things get a little bit more hardcore with the nutrition with me just because I have things that I'm trying to accomplish with my physique. But for like general population, um, you know, I'm always a believer that you need to get your carbs in, in the day earlier in the day, um, carbs at night, not a fan. Um, the carbs are going to give you that extra energy that you need to help sustain your day. So if you're going to carb it up, carb it up in the morning, carb it up meal one, two, three, um, and then leave your carbs out for the rest of the day. You're going to have a lot of energy to sustain your lifestyle. Um, and whatever else it is that you're doing, um, and you're not going to feel heavy at night. Um, by consuming a lot of carbs. So the body needs time to fast. It needs time to burn fat. It needs time to recover. It needs time to do all of these little things that people don't think about on the day-to-day -day basis when it comes to, um, our, you know, just all those physiological processes that have to take place in order to achieve a certain result. So, um, you know, carve it up in the morning. That's always what I say. Don't miss oh, the yeah. morning feedings. Like, Meals one, two, three, whatever that is for you. It may not be breakfast. It may be a little bit later in the day. It may be something else. Um, so having that um, gives you almost a carb cycle in a way to where you're getting all your carbs in and then you're leaning out the carbs the rest of the day. Your body is going to respond a lot better. You're not going to have a lot of inflammation. Um, and in the morning when you get up, you're just going to feel leaner, tighter, and just happier and ready to go ah okay got it so carbs okay um just if you um do you um do you um tell the people how to um how the macros are uh, i mean just like how uh, protein fat and carbs are during the day or just like you as long as, as they fit their calories everything is fine so i mean for you it's completely different mm -hmm. i mean i, I don't even want to ask uh, <laughs> <laughs> how many protein you're going to eat and how less car uh, carbs are still in there. But for the general population. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of my clients who are not in any kind of competition prep, non-athletes, um, I do give them um, the amounts of the things that they need to consume. So if, you know, they're on a program where they've got like six meals a day, okay, well, five out of those meals, they're going to consume, you know, five, five ounces of, pro of a protein. They're going to consume green vegetables, whatever that is, usually a good serving, five ounces, five and a half ounces, something like that. Um, I give them the ounces or the grams, um, and then they have to fit their whatever it is they're cooking into that. Now, I don't have them count sauces. I don't have them count, you know, salt or anything else that they may do, like if they add lettuce into something or whatever. I don't count those things. Um, I just give them the base structure of what they're supposed to be consuming. And then they have um, 
um, variations of that that they can utilize. Um, and I map it all out for them so they don't have to wonder, okay, well, is this okay? Is this not approved? Is this going to do this, this, or this? They know um, every single meal what it is that they need to put together. So oh, okay. I, do, I don't, not really big into macros. I don't like macro counting. Um, you just need to be able to support what it is that you're trying to accomplish. Um, and I do have some clients who like the macros counting approach and that works for them. I think it's really a mental thing more than anything else. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, you need to create that deficit every day. If you're trying to lose weight or if you're trying to put on mass, you either need to cr create a deficit or, you know, create an overage with those calories and those calories need to come from whole foods. So, um, so is there like a minimum dose of protein? I mean, it's just like if you if you want to gain uh, gain weight, I mean, uh, gain muscle, mm -hmm. a, your, a certain amount is uh, is probably uh, normal. And how many carbs how, for, for you? Just like mm -hmm. you as a uh, um, just to show at you, um, how many carbs do you eat right now? <laughs> so I have off days and training day nutrition. So um, okay. My training day, um, I'm usually eating about 150 grams of rice. Um, I do a half a cup of oatmeal in the morning, and then I'll usually have about like five ounces of potato, and that's my meals one, two, three. Um, my protein intake is um, the first two meals, meal two, meal three, I'm about five and a half ounces, and then the rest of it is five ounces per meal of a protein. Um, I'm a huge fan of elk. Um, I do eat a lot of elk, especially in prep. It's extremely lean. It tastes phenomenal. And um, okay. it uh, digestively, it's very easy to digest. So for people who may have sensitivities and things like that, it's really a great way to go. Um, it is leaner than turkey um, and doesn't get dry it out like turkey does. So uh, makes you taste makes you feel like you're eating something naughty, but you're really not. Um, my off days or basically my active rest days, the only thing that I do I consume carb wise oatmeal and then a hundred grams of rice and that's it. Um, and those are my first two meals of the day. So again, creating that carb cycle throughout the day, the rest of the day, I'm completely carb free with the exception of vegetables. So, Oh, okay. Okay. But, but um, I, sp I, I think you weigh your, your food. So I mean, I mean, it's like, absolutely. Yeah, you have to. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Oh, okay. yep. Mm. So it's not like for your client that you say, okay, whole foods, Mm -hmm. the, most people whole foods will have so as, as long they just like eliminate all the junk food all the convenience food all processed everything. foods processed, processed foods, meats yeah, yeah. um yes. you know and there's just a simple strategy there you know you can use your hand to measure things out like if people yeah. don't want to measure with a scale or they don't want to get into that okay well you know you got a hand you got a fist you know that you know fistfuls and handfuls of certain components yeah. are going to give you an approximation of what you should be eating so especially depending on if you're a man or a woman Yeah, I, I try. I mean, just like this is the re recommendation that I always do. But if I told a woman, just like this is the size of the protein that we have to eat, it's like <laughs> yep. what? That, that's it. That's it. Yeah, you weigh like 30 kilos less than your husband. Yeah, that's why you shouldn't eat so much. So, so this is like, oh, but I never get full of it. Yeah, maybe you should start uh, start at least. Yeah, I mean, this is a, it's so it's so I mean, just like so hard because they are so overeating over the time. They are mm -hmm. not supposed. They, they don't even don't know what the right amount is of everything. So it's like eat yep. until they are so full, and they feel bad afterwards that they eat it anyways. So it's always the same cycle they're going through, and so but it's good that you use the same hand measurement. This is Absolutely. good. It's a simple way to, to yeah. help people understand like what it is their portion sizes are. because that's the biggest problem I think for a lot of people is how do I portion this out? You know, how much do I eat? You know, you got to think about protein specifically and our bodies can only process so much at one time. So depending on if you're a man or a woman and if your body isn't processing, you're eating 60, you know, 60 grams of, of protein um, in one meal and you're a woman, most of that's going to turn to fat. Because your body just can't process it and it's going to get harder on the liver and all these other things. So, um, you know, having people understand those portion sizes is huge. Just make them feel better and less inflammation in the body overall. Yeah, and the portions are, aren't so big. So they make it maybe eat like five or six times a, week, a, a day. Yeah. So con constantly it's, it makes them feel better. And there is it, the second gallon of the day. 
the mm-hmm. first one. This is the first ah, one. This is my first one of the day. Yes. Yeah. So I'm about half through. <laughs> yeah, because it's just like I, I completely forget. My day is almost done. For you, it just uh, started five hours yes. ago. <laughs> just, around, <That's> right. <laughs> just about. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um. What I read on your site, you. What is a mutant squad? Ah uh, yes. So, um, mutant is a supplement company. Um, my coach is a sponsored athlete through them and I was accepted in as part of the mutant squad. So I love their products. Um, again, I'm very sensitive to a lot of the things that I consume. So I have to be careful, you know, what sports supplements that I put in my body, pre-workouts, you know, BCAs, EAAs, all those things. Um, because I don't want to create inflammation in my body. You know, I don't want to feel bloated. I don't want to feel sick or any of those things. So that's one brand that I can always count on consistently to give me everything that I need supplement wise um, without having any issues. So I, I like to promote that as much as possible because I have a lot of other people, clients um, that suffer from the same thing and they just don't know what to get because everything they try maybe has a certain, you know, um, sugar alternative than another that could be causing them digestive problems. And there's all these little things that you don't really realize could be the culprit of stuff. Um, so when I find something good that works, I'm going to tell everybody about it. Ah, okay. So what is the most used supplement at this time? Don't tell me salt. Oh, no. Um, I do put salt on my food still, though. Um, that's okay. one thing I don't leave out. Um, because I'm flushing my body out so much with water, I got to have that salt back in there. Yeah. Um, it's a very crucial part of our um, what our body needs. Now, as far as like sports supplementation, um, I have had over the last three weeks to actually utilize a really good stimulated pre-workout. I typically don't do stimulated pre-workouts. Um, at all. Um, but because I'm getting a little bit more tired, the training's getting intensified, it just helps to sustain me a little bit longer. Um, and then I'm always, um, I always have my intro workout with me, which is very important too, which is my EAAs. And, um, those are the two most crucial components of my training right now, just because I, my body needs just a little bit of extra, um, support as i'm going through my training okay. program in the morning so yeah. just you're too tired yeah it's not a, not enough energy right now it's so no <laughs> no but only rice <clears throat> so it's like uh, in eight weeks is the competition yeah eight weeks and two days actually and that includes peak week so oh, yeah yeah it's gonna be like, it's gonna be a lot of fun i i, I suggest Oh my gosh, it's you know it's going to be great because I've already crushed my physique look from last year, so it'll oh, be wow. exciting to see what happens um, over the next eight weeks. I mean, it's oh, wow. so, crazy. So first, yeah. so first, ste- first big step done. Yes. Now it's oh my, it's, it sounds perfect. So um, other thing, uh, as we met, just like there was uh, there was a time that you didn't f- did well. Mm-hmm. That you've been uh, struggling a lot of yep. things, and do you think that um, that the comp- uh, that sports helps you a lot uh, going through with this, or just you say, you say um, it was uh, maybe it wasn't uh, wasn't completely the opposite because it just like it pushes away um, uh, because you've been preparing for something. It mm-hmm. pushes away the the problem a little bit away from you, so you don't have to uh, work over it. Um, what do you think? Um, I do think that that does um, have hold some truth as far as, um, you know, I think that there's a lot of people that are in this industry as an athlete and myself, I'm talking to myself when I say this, um, is that sometimes we utilize this as a way to hide behind certain things. Yeah. Um, you know, maybe it's an excuse to sweep certain things under the rug, but um, after having that experience, um, it helped me really realize that the one thing that has helped sustain me throughout um, a lot of the challenges I've had over life has been this industry. This has given me life in, in more ways than I could ever imagine. Um, and it, it teaches me a lot about myself, uh, time management, how to balance everything out with home, business, kids, um, and still be able to 
do what I love to do. Um, you know, it's a genuine passion that I have uh, to be an athlete in this industry and that in and of itself, um, I, I think has helped to open up a little bit more, um, be more um, open to humanity, I, I guess you can say, and to open up my space to welcome other people in who maybe are struggling as well. Um, you know, I, I look more for this to be an inspiration for other people, especially my kids. Um, you know, my daughter is also a competitive athlete um, in synchronized swimming. And this is this having her grow up in this industry, watching me and being a part of this has really helped her understand and appreciate the things that she has to do as an athlete herself. Um, you know, and it just keeps her inspired and motivated to go. Oh, okay. So the next question, um, did you continue reading books? Yes. So, oh my gosh. yeah, I know. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. During this time, it helped a lot. I, I don't know how many books, uh, books I'm reading um, or that I read during the last month, but I continue reading. So what, uh, what was the most um, or maybe the best book that you can recommend for somebody? Um, Unfuck Yourself. 100%. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, the reason why I say that is because it's a very simple read. Um, to begin with. And if you're getting, if you're new into wanting to get into reading any kind of personal development in any way whatsoever, I think it's really a good eye opener. I think that the author is really playful um, with his words and how he um, it inspires through them. Um, so I think that it's just a great jump starter for a lot of people um, before they really dig into some other things, because I think yeah. if they dig too deep initially, it's just going to end up pushing them away. So this is kind of a fun, more lighthearted, but yet very impactful book that I think would be good just to get your feet wet. Yeah. Man Up is pretty similar. Yeah. I mean, I like, the I mean, just like it's a, it's a similar read. So it's always just like keep pushing, get better. So I, even though I, I think I read Unfuck Yourself in German, I, I, I think I have it, but I, I have no clue what it's all about. Honestly. Yeah. yeah this, this is, this is the, the, the bad thing about reading is, If you continue reading, you forget mm -hmm. to think about the books that you read about. So maybe just like to take some time to digest it, to think mm -hmm. about what you read. So maybe implement it into your, your daily life. So it helps a little bit more. Yeah. Not only because some people are read because of reading. Just to say, right. oh, I read like, I don't know, every uh, every other week one book. So mm -hmm. I'm in the one week book club or whatever it is. Yes, the one week and, book club, yep. And then if you, if you ask somebody, so... So what is the book about, all, all about? It's like, oh, I don't know, to be honest. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> There's so many people that I know. I, I mean, just like, I'm the same. I'm the same. Just like maybe some books that interest me so well, so I keep it in mind, but some are just like, I run it through, I fly it yeah. through, that's it. So that's not, so maybe this, I should, yeah, maybe I should read the book again. Yeah, just, some of the books I've revisited myself. I've read, you know, two uh, and three times, and it, each time I learned something different, or maybe it was something that I scanned over, didn't really absorb, like you had mentioned, um, and it yeah. just kind of helps to solidify some of that information. But yeah, there's a few of them. Um, the Four Agreements is another wonderful book. Um, that one I've read four times um, over the last year, and I I've learned something different every single time. So which one? Bo which book was it? The Four Agreements. Ah, uh, The Four Agreements. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. Haven't read it so far. Yeah, that one is so, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, book. Yeah, I'm gonna put it in the show notes so people can just maybe find something about it. Um anyway, so um yeah. I, I think I'm gonna have some some calls with John and also with Mike. Oh, so, that'll be so great. Yeah, I just like I, I Because because it's a completely different profession and this has helps me so I love this. maybe so keep in touch with you guys a little bit. So even though it's I have to bring value for the listeners, it's uh -huh. also bring value I think for all of us to so keep in touch. Maybe to so see what's happened during the last uh, last time. And maybe the last question for today. Um, okay, you close uh, in four weeks. There's a important Tuesday in America. Um, yes. The voting is going up. How is um, life during this time now in the US? I mean, for us Europeans, it's pretty cra crazy what we can see mm -hmm. over the media. 
but it's always uh, interesting to see how the people are living um, over the over the sea. Um, how how are you doing over there? Uh, it's you know it's pretty insane. Um, I'll tell you the the anxiety I think has been probably the hardest thing for everybody to um, manage and try to cope with because you know there's just so much uncertainty over here right now and all the political. Um, games that have been played have really been um, tough on everybody, mentally, emotionally, um, you know, depression is at its all time high. I know suicides have been um, just increasing in numbers, to scary, scary, um, because of the isolation and, you know, the, the, um, the financial, you know, destruction yeah. that a lot of people have um, gone through and are continuing to go through because of everything that's going on. I, I, you know, my heart goes out to a lot of people, um, because I understand what that's like. Um, but you know, there's, I have friends and colleagues that just are afraid to walk outside their door because you don't know if somebody's gonna, you know, drive by and shoot you. And there's been a lot of that lately. The, the media has been pouring out negativity, like, it's just nonstop vomit. And I know that it's some yeah. of the things that you have seen probably on the news and, and that's, you know, that's what we experience here. There's nothing positive being talked about, which has been really hard. Um, it brings down the energy and the motivation for a lot of people. And, you know, it's, um, it's extremely depressing. You just have to find some good out of it um, as best you can. And you have to hold on to that and you just have to keep going. Um, you know, it's, um, it's a weird time. It's a weird time for kids to grow up in. You know, I can't remember a time where anything was this, you know, horrific, you know, going on in the world when I was growing up. Um, so that's been a challenge, you know, telling the kids that, oh, no, you can't see your friends because of this, this, this. Yeah. You know, if you end up going back to school, oh, you can't play with your friends. You guys have to be six feet apart and all these things. It's just weird. And, um, you know, the energy from the things that the media have been driving home for a lot of people has just been horrific and nobody's doing anything about it. And that's the, that's the worst part. I know that Trump has really crashed down on the media since he has taken over presidency. Um, but again, they drive the narrative here and um, it doesn't matter, you know, unless somebody can have an act of God and actually, you know, I don't know, legally do something to these people. They're just going to continue to drive this, this, destruction as, as hard as they can yeah. so that's for sure mm -hmm. so uh i know it's not a positive ending but i wish you all the best thank we you keep so much in touch. You thank you so much for being here oh it was my pleasure yeah it's always per it's always nice to talk with you so we keep in touch and stay safe and good luck for Absolutely. the preparation thank you so much <laughs> jennifer take care bye bye, -bye.